so very much to me. I love you very much. Alex, if you love me, why won't you marry me? You know I can't divorce Chris. There's too much at stake. Believe me. Do you really want a divorce, Chris? Of course. Alex, if you really wanted to, I know you'd find a way. There's some things that I know about you, Alex. And I'm sure if she knew, it would make things a lot easier for you. You worry too much. Everything's gonna be all right eventually. Inez, look at me. Look at me. <gasps> What are you doing? Alex! Alex, why? Why, Alex, why? You are my attorney. 
You better get me out of here. What, uh, what am I paying you for? Dr. Harper told me you've improved a great deal, but you're not cured yet. Releasing the patient now would severely damage her mental health. Listen, Joe, please. I should not be here. I, I am all right. I am uh, as sane as you are. There is nothing, nothing wrong with me. Not according to Dr. Harper and your husband. Don't tell me. Seymour has gotten hold of Alex like this, like, like this. That's my baby. Look, look. And the way he's weaving money out of him for so-called research. Just bad, baby. I'm going to kill you. That's what I mean. That's what I mean, Joe. I shouldn't be here. Is there anywhere else we can talk? Yes, upstairs, my boy. I'm sorry things didn't work out with Inez. Unfortunately, in medical research, we sometimes have to face the unexpected. I'm afraid we'll have to write your girlfriend off as a failed experiment. Seymour, if she just hadn't become such a problem... I know. If she just hadn't insisted that you divorce Chris and marry her... I told her I couldn't divorce my wife. Absolutely not. Not with all the dough Chris has. Not with her owning the Michelin Mills. Yeah, and we need that money to support our research. Yes, yeah, so what would happen to our work within the fascinating field of mind alteration had it not been for the Michelin Millions? Inez, if she just hadn't threatened to tell Chris about our affair. That's right, Alex. If you hadn't screwed her, maybe she wouldn't have tried to screw you. Dr. Harper, what have you done to my son? He's not getting any better. He's getting worse. And I don't see any improvement. We're doing our very best to help your son. I think you're a killer. Ma'am, get hold of yourself. You told me that you could improve on his mental retardation. But he's gotten even worse. Orderly, nurse, please You get killed his out. mind. He's worse now than when he first entered the hospital. Thank I can't you. believe Thank I gave my written consent. We haven't even scratched the surface of our research yet. And we're just coming up with more questions. No answers. Nothing. Have you spoken to Alex? Not yet. I've tried to contact him, but he's rather elusive. I know. His research is all the man cares about. Yes, I've spoken to Dr. Harper about it. You know, perfecting the brain surgery in order to at least give some uh, intelligence to the retired is quite an exciting undertaking. Utopia, pure science fiction if you ask me. And it hurts to stand by so, so powerless while Alex wastes his life on a hopeless dream. Landing a man on the moon was once considered a hopeless dream. No, I think Dr. Harper and your husband have something very exciting going. And it could make them very famous. <laughs> and will drain my finances. Only indirectly, Chris. After all, Michelin Mills is uh, responsible for the research. Ah, Joe, let me explain, please. My board of directors is getting very uneasy about this particular tax shelter. And they are considering the possibility of withdrawing their support. Alex, of course, is very upset about the whole thing. Oh, really? Well, Alex told me that you were upset about it oh. and had accused him of trying to force you to a sale of the mills. He cited your rather uh, eccentric behavior mm -hmm. as another one of your mm -mm. hallucinations. Can't believe it. <laughs> Alex, we can't keep Chris here any longer. Her attorney is making some inquisitive noises. Did you tell him she's still under severe stress? Has those hallucinations? about her erratic behavior? Obviously. But he threatens to have her examined by a psychiatrist of his choice. And he'll find out there's nothing wrong with her. Yeah. Too bad. Life would be a lot easier if we weren't so desperate for Chris's money to finance our research. Just remember, money's the root of all research.
What's going on, Charlie? Hmm? They killed someone here. Good. Go on, Charlie. Go on. I'm not telling you a story. I really saw them kill a girl. A pretty one. I know they think I'm missing some marbles up here. Oh, that's why my wife, the bitch, put me in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We all know you are fine. You are fine, Charlie. Now, what about this girl? How how did you find her? So. One night, I had to go to the bathroom, and sometimes I'm getting confused, and so I couldn't find the John, and I I went into this room, and there was this girl, and oh, they put a long needle in her head. <laughs> There's Flanagan and uh, uh, Dr. Humphrey. Oh, my God. If, if they find out I saw them kill a girl, they'll kill me. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. Time to go. Come on. No, no, no. We're going to the treatment room now. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. We're going. Go. No. All we have to do is perform a relatively simple operation on Chris. We'll inactivate yeah. these areas surgically, and your wife's mental capacities will deteriorate very quickly. You'll have her declared incompetent, and her money is yours. Sounds simple enough. Not quite. There are a few things we have to do before we can perform the surgery. First, We'll have to release her. Yes, sir. And inform her attorney that she's cured. Then we'll have to get her into a stressful situation. Mm. Well, never mind. I'll think of something. Anyhow, once the poor girl begins hallucinating again, we'll have no other choice. We'll have to bring her in for treatment. Then we'll perform the surgery. And bingo.
Once Chris is out of the way, I won't have to beg her for every penny I spend on research. Alex, I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is actually possible to repair and redesign the human brain. Imagine the impact on society when we take an imbecile and turn him into a functional human being or a habitual criminal and turn him into a model citizen. Staggering. And it's just unfortunate that we have had a few failures. Paul in particular. Puzzles me how in his case the procedure totally eliminated his human qualities. And Inez? What can I say? Dr. Hopper! Dr. Hopper! What's wrong? Patient number 56 has escaped. Paul Pearson? That's impossible. He has no will of his own. Oh, he's not there. You know, you're homely. No wonder no one ever loved you. Oh, they tolerate you because you own the Michelin mills. But they don't love you. You know what? You were lucky to find a husband. But he didn't marry you for your looks. Oh. He married you for your money. When was the last time he ever touched you? Uh, maybe he has someone on the side. Who knows? So, you better pretty yourself up for him. Pretty, pretty. Ready? Ready. Pretty, 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 pretty. Oh my God. What am I doing? I'm acting like the rest of them. What are they doing to me? Alex, why do they permit this? I have good news for you. I can go home? Well, not exactly home, darling. Chris, hmm? you're not completely recovered yet. You'll have to remain for some time under Seymour's care. Forget about Seymour. I can't stand him. He's familiar with your case, your stress symptoms, uh, your hallucinations. Oh, come on, Alex. I never had hallucinations. And, and I don't trust Seymour. There's, uh, there's something about him. Chris, let's not argue. Besides, Seymour and his family are spending the summer in Pacific Cove. He was nice enough to rent a house for you there. It's right next to his place. <sighs> Will you come with me? You know I can't. I'll have to take you to the hospital. Oh, Alex. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. Alex, what is happening between us? Is there another woman? What gave you that idea? You are so distant. Let's be honest. You reject me. Why? You're imagining things. What? What you're still doing is living in your imaginary world of fears. You're not cured yet. Alex, I need to see you for a moment. It's urgent. Excuse me. Chris Nielsen speaking. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There's so much static on the line. Ines? Ines who? 
Oh, you're the owner of the house we are renting for this summer. Uh huh. You're in Europe now? <laughs> Great. I envy you. Sure. Sure, I'll take care of your plans. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Every day. And the. Yeah, I got you. Uh huh. Every week, some plant food. Let me write down your address and telephone number. Mm -hmm. All right. Swan Hotel, Munich, Gärtnerstraße 3. Got it. Uh huh. 478. Inez. Uh, hey, hey, Inez. Ah, <sighs> disconnected. Overseas operator, please. Operator, I was disconnected. A listing in West Germany, Munich. Swan Hotel, Gärtnerstraße 3. I beg your pardon? There's no such hotel listed. Are you sure? Uh, never mind. Mom! Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dad told me you've been released. Let me take a look at you, you know. Glad Dad married you instead of instead of who? Never mind. be a dollar. We're looking for Inez's place. Uh, you'll be spending the summer there. How do you know? Oh, I know things and uh, I feel things. Are you psychic? Some people think I am. Inez's house is about two miles down the road. You really can't miss it. Thanks. You know, if I were you, I would turn right around and go back to Los Angeles. Why? Well, it's uh, really not my place to uh, say. Oh. 
doing here? Hi, Mom. I'm home. I've run away. I'm working my fingers to the bone to get you well. And you've run away. You're going straight back to the hospital. I can't go back. I've... disorderly. He was a bastard. He deserved. I didn't want to do it. I had to. Oh, my God. What have they done to you? Mom, I want to stay with you. Let me think. And you'll fix me apple fritters? This is the first place they'll come looking for you. You're not mad with me, are you, Mom? You're not going to stick a needle in my head. I love you. You're my son. I love you so much it hurts. No. I'm not angry with you. I know. You'll hide out at the old McFarland place. No, Mom. That place is haunted. Well, you're going to have to go there right now. Sorry, we are late. Better late than never. <laughs> My daughter, Becky. Hi. Hi. I have the papers and keys inside. The place is a bit of a mess. Surely needs dusting and aired out. Inez left in such a hurry. Well, I didn't even know she was gone. But then Dr. Harper called me. Let me show you around. Fine. I have to make certain the inventory is correct. Go ahead, no problem. Two easy chairs. One couch. Coffee table. Not that I don't trust you, but business is business. I know, no problem. All cried out. How come Ines covered her furniture but didn't take care of her painting stuff? I really wouldn't know. <laughs> Excuse me, I better get my bags put away. Okay, fine. Forget the paintings. Is that you? Becky. Did you eat here a few minutes ago? No. I want to show you something. 
You got yourself a snapshot of a ghost. You're kidding. You mean that's a shot of an apparition? Possibly. Come on, Mom. Be sensible. There's no such thing as ghosts. Really? With love, Ines. What a gorgeous girl. It is like, like something or, or someone is always around me, looking over my shoulder. I'm imagining things. I see and hear things that, that are not, not there. Maybe I am ill. Maybe, maybe I'm insane.
Mom, I'm going to the village. You need anything? Mm. Can't think of anything. Okay. Have fun. Bye-bye. Harper's wife. Please come on in. I'm your next door neighbor. That is, uh, if living two miles down the road, you can call next door. Is there anything I can get you? Some coffee, tea, a cold drink? Coffee's fine. Can't find a thing. A coffee cup, a spoon, a coffee. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. He just moved in yesterday, and I didn't have any time to clean up, or to unpack, or just to do anything. Thanks. Don't apologize. I like Messy. You do? Mm -hmm. It gives a slob <laughs> like me a good feeling. <laughs> I mean, uh, your kitchen doesn't come up to mine. I still take the prize for messiness. <laughs> I never imagined Dr. Harper married to... To a slob? Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well... I guess everyone expected the great Seymour would fancy a dedicated germ hunter. Mm -hmm. You know, scrub, scrub, clean, clean, wash, wash. <laughs> Someone like our sainted Inez. Oh, you know her. Who didn't? Oh, yes, I knew her. <laughs> you said you knew her. I mean, uh, I know her. What in the world possessed you to rent her house? I didn't. Your husband rented it for me. I see. Is there anything wrong with this house? Well, nothing wrong except uh, a leaking roof, a warm water heater that doesn't like warm water. You know, the ordinary little disasters. <laughs> nothing like that. I mean, is this house haunted? <laughs> For heaven's sakes. But I hear footsteps, and I hear voices, and someone crying. Hey, don't let my Seymour hear you say that crap. You know he doesn't believe in ghosts and all that shit. He'll have you back in the loony bin in no time. So, <laughs> Seymour doesn't believe in spirits. <laughs> Only in the bottled kind. That figures. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to my errand. We're having a little party tonight, and I'd love for you to come over and meet everybody. And See what's going on. <laughs> Would love to. I enjoy it. Put on my best dress. <laughs> about going down to my dad's party? He's got a live band. Probably moldy oldies, I bet. Yeah. I want to do something exciting. Like what? Nothing exciting here. We could go to a movie. There's a good one playing at the Roxy. Yeah. yeah, Snow White and Severn's Wharfs. Shut up, kid. Hey, listen, I'm not a kid. I'll show you. Watch yourself. Hey, how about going down to L.A.? Oh, sure, and crash the sleazeball strip joint. Forget it, pal. I bet they wouldn't even let you in. Says who? <laughs> 
Listen, I've been to every damn joint on the strip. Ha, listen, a big mouth. Shut up, shrimpy. Nah, I'm full of shit, though. Hey, get off my back, you guys. Come on, you two, you don't have to fight. Let's have fun. I know what. We can go to the old McFarlane place and try to get in. The haunted house? Are you bonkers? It might be kind of fun. It's spooky. Hey, it's only an old farmhouse. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Is the place really, I mean, really haunted? Ah, it's just an old house. It's been deserted for God, who knows. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And yeah, we just like to pretend. Hey, there's plenty wrong with that place. Well, I've seen some lights in there and some shadows of people and... Count me out. Me too. Chicken. <laughs> I'm going. The place sounds Boy. neat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tried so hard to be your friend How could you ever let it end? Oh, well, it seems to me just I want you to meet Dr. Levin and his daughter Alice. This is Chris Nelson. How do you do? How do you do? So you're Alex's wife? Yes, I am. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Your name is Chris? Yes. I always thought Alex was a bachelor. Daddy, didn't you miss tell us? Never mind, never mind. Marge! Hi! Hi, Alice. How have you been? Great. How was Europe? Oh, smashing. Let me tell you. Some punch, please. The house is fine, and I'm all right. Glad to hear it. Still, I think it might be a good idea if you had someone with you at the house. Why, hello, Mrs. Peterson. What a surprise to see you. After all, I don't think I invited you. I want to talk to you, Dr. Harper. Not now. Right now. It's about my son, Paul. Call me tomorrow. Yes, in fact, take two aspirin and call me tomorrow. You're a fraud. A killer! Would you leave my house? Now! I'm confused. I be met the other day at your store. Remember? Oh, yes. I remember. I gave you directions to, uh, Inez's house. Right. I know I wasn't very friendly to you then. <laughs> Why didn't you go back to Los Angeles? Well, uh... Don't you know that you're in great danger? Chris, don't stay in Inez's house. Please. I'm going. you different. Really? Kind of cold, stern. I mean business-like. Completely different from Inez. Inez? Never mind. I must have had a drop too many. What made you marry Alex? The two of you are so different. Well, let's see. 
<laughs> Desperation, I guess. I was so busy running the mills, so time kind of slipped by. So one day, when I looked into the mirror and saw this girl I pictured myself to be, just disappeared. Oh, what the hell? No one ever asked me. So when Alex came along, I just kind of grabbed him. Come on, Ellen. I'm not a computer. I want some warmth, some companionship, understanding, or at least the illusion of it. Nothing important. Just party chit chat. Anything you say to that psychotic is important. I don't want you talking to her about the McFarlane house or anything else. Period. My research is at a critical stage. I will not tolerate anyone or anything jeopardizing my work. And that includes you. It'd be wise to be very clear about that. I don't like the tone of that. You'd like the reality of it even less. Seymour, I'm concerned about the lack of success we've had with our experiments. I'm open to any brilliant suggestions you might have, Bill. Why not abandon the project? It's not brilliant, but it's logical. 
We are all past the point of no return, Bill. It shouldn't surprise you that problems do occur when you're on the cutting edge of medical research. But if it'll make you feel any better, Alex is recruiting some nice, volunteer, anonymous street people. That place is too spooky. You're wet, party pooper. <laughs> I just don't like this kind of fun. Yeah, when the ghosts go boom. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. So bad. So it's all settled. We're going to the Carlin place. Right? Mm -hmm. No way, count me out. That is trespassing. Oh. Oh. I'm just, uh, give me a break. Yeah, well, let's go before it's too late. All right, but hey guys, don't squeal bad to anybody. My dad would give me hell if he found out we were going to his little special place, all right? Yeah, hell, he doesn't know I've seen things there. What things? Never you mind, you'll find out for yourself. Hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. You want to have a good time? What's a good time? Anything you want. Fifty. And don't mess up my hair. Fifty's fine. How okay. Sure. But not till you show me the dough. Okie dokie. You guys, I'm scared. Let's go home. Don't be a chicken. Excuse me, girls. You want to let, let's get going? Hey, Mister. Where do you think you're going? I told you to make a left. Uh -huh. What do you think you're doing? That's a weird place, I'm telling you. Scaredy cat. It's an old empty house. There's nothing to be scared about. Yeah, I've been in this dump a couple times. The right girl under me is not so bad at all. Will you shut your mouth? What do you ever think about is sex? Did you see that? What? The man in the second story window. A ghost?
Becky. Just a minute. You better get your ass in here. On the double. Mom, what are you doing? Look, the trail. It rocks all by itself. No, it doesn't. What are you talking about? Maybe I should be back in the loony bin. What's wrong? Wrong? Nothing's wrong. Just listen. Listen to this noise. And there's no one in the kitchen. What noise? I don't hear anything. Oh, my God. Maybe you should see Seymour and talk to him. No, I hate him. Talk to him. You're hallucinating again. Becky, I never had hallucinations. And I don't have hallucinations now. I know what I see. And I know what I hear. But Dad said... Never mind. Dr. Harper, please. sounds. I mean, footsteps. The swishing of silk. Silk? Yes. Like an evening gown or a robe. I guess a robe. Anything else? Look, when I first came to the house, I had right away this, uh, uh, this, yeah, this oppressive feeling. Could you be more specific? No. Oh, I don't know. Was there anything else? I don't want to talk about it. Chris, we're not getting anywhere this way. I know you're not overly fond of me. I despise you. And I hate what you stand for. That's pretty strong, Chris. I think it's simply a case of your being jealous of my work. Not at all. But I'm afraid of the influence you have over Alex. Hmm. Still, you're financing our research. <laughs> Not for long anymore. Seymour, you know as well as I do that my board of directors is opposed to this particular tax shelter. Now let's not worry about the board. Let's get on with our session. I have another patient scheduled. So how about this feeling you've encountered? I don't know. It is like something is coming towards me out of the walls, uh, the furniture. And this morning, and this is why I called you, I saw a rocking chair rocking all by itself. And there were all kinds of noises from the kitchen, like an egg beater going, coffee percolating, baking sizzling. Seymour, 
I don't want to talk about it. I think we better risk it. All right. things going can't complain everything's moving along on schedule yeah Chris is right on the path we wanted to travel yeah she's hearing all the sounds you planted in the house you now listen Terrific work. Yeah. She even mentioned some sounds I didn't know anything about. What are the noises? I don't know what you're talking about. All kinds of kitchen noises. An egg beater going 100 miles an hour. Uh, bacon sizzling. Oh, let me ask you. How did you manage to rig up the rocking chair so it rocks all by itself? Rocking chair that rocks by itself? I didn't rig up anything like that. What the hell is going on there anyway? I see the phenomena and I hear those eerie sounds, but Becky, that's, uh, my stepdaughter doesn't. Am I hallucinating? Am I, uh, insane? You tell me, you are the psychic. You were not hallucinating at all. You really did encounter the supernatural. But why me? Why didn't Becky do? Some people encounter the supernatural and others don't. You must understand the human mind as far as the supernatural is concerned. It works like a radio receiver. Some radios can pick up signals from overseas. Others pick up signals uh, that are transmitted from a radius of several miles away only. You're tuned in to pick up supernatural signals. It's as simple as that. You're not crazy at all. Don't worry. <laughs> <sighs>
seen what is right. There are no sounds. Chris, get hold of yourself. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The chair doesn't rock. No. Dear Lord, please, I'm not insane. wake up. You were out cold when I came in. What happened? I don't know. There was this man. Just... Uh... Are you hurt? Uh -uh. Not really. Well, you better come home with me for a little while. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be resting. I'm fine. Uh, Burdus. Beckman, control, wrong file. By the way, I saw Inez this morning. You couldn't. She's gone. I mean, she went to Europe. Probably I was wrong. I'm quite sure you were. Have you heard from her? No, I haven't. Not even a postcard. Not even a postcard. <laughs> she's probably having so much fun she's forgotten her friends. Probably. Not even Alice Levin's heard from her. And you know Alice the Blabbermouth would have told me. <laughs> Alice <laughs> the Blabbermouth? Oh, yes. She's our local gossip. Ah. 
Chris, mm -hmm. if I were you, I wouldn't ask too much about Inez. Why? I can't tell you. But I'm your friend. I know you are. And I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Is this a warning? All right. I stand warned. It's so damn hot today. Hello. Well. I don't know. I'll call you right back. One of Seymour's patients. Professional code of ethics. Go ahead. I'll be right back. A passport. Inez's passport and her credit cards. How can she be in Europe without her passport? I envy Inez. Being in Europe at this time of the year. Ah. Uh, I don't think Inez has much fun. Really? These exercises are going to kill me. I don't think she really wanted to go to Europe. She left in an awful hurry. It was about five, maybe six weeks ago when Inez came by. She looked god awful. You know, really drawn. That girl was a mess. One of these days they're gonna have to take me out of here on a stretcher. This thing is a killer. Anyway, Nurse told me she was afraid. Of what? I don't know. She only told me she was afraid. She said, I'm afraid that something will happen to me. It doesn't make any sense. How can Annis be in Europe? without her passport. No, it doesn't make any sense. Unless... She was killed before she even needed her passport. <gasps> Did you go to the police? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> they know I was in the loony bin. They wouldn't believe ever it, I'm saying. Well, that's true. <laughs> so for starters, <laughs> let's find out what really happened to Inez. I always find a Ouija board handy for an initial investigation. So how about it? Becky, you better take a sweater along. Don't treat me like a five-year-old. Sorry. So, where are you off to? Well, we're going out for pizza and then maybe to the McFarland place. Becky, why didn't you ever tell me that your father was having an affair with Agnes? So he was. I think this house is in a period of activity. I believe we have a good chance of making contact with any entity occupying this house. We must give our full concentration and belief.
we are ready. We have cleansed ourselves of disbelief. We can accept any entity coming towards us. Gives me the creeps. Just look at this place. I'm going home. You scaredy cat. Come on. I'm definitely going home. Don't wet your pants. Did you see that thing in the window? Maybe we should go home. Let's find out who that guy is. Hey, mister. Well? Maybe he's dead. Let's go inside and take a look. But be careful. Oh, my dad will kill me if he ever finds out I snooped around this place. What are we waiting for? Come on. with a spirit guide. Tell us your name. Q V R U No. Ch Ch Julia. No. Julian. A man by the name of Julian will be our spirit guide. He will answer our questions. We want to make contact with a woman named Inez. Is she still with us? No. Has she crossed over to the other side? Has she crossed over? No. Is she in limbo? Yes. We now know what happened to Inez. She was killed. Where are the kids? Becky said they went to some place. Uh, yes, the McFarlane place. The McFarlane place? Oh my God! When did they leave? About an hour or so ago. We better get there before. For what? Never mind. I think we better go right now. Let's check this out. Listen. What is that? I don't know. Let's get 
get out of here. Oh, you can, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In here. Let's check it out. Let's get out of here. No, I want to find out what that noise is. Look, it's an old radio. <laughs> we thought we were ghost busting. They don't tell the guys about this, huh? Hey, let's get out of here. There's an old radio on. There's got to be someone living there, right? I want to meet that guy. Let's get out. Come on. Sure. I think here? No, no. We came up some steps. I don't remember any steps. Joe! Becky! Vicky! Tony! Come out, you idiots! I bet you they left us stranded. Yeah, I bet they're laughing their full heads off. Wait till I get a hold of those jerks. Let's try this way. Eventually we'll get out. Go. Come on. I told you before. Come on, Vic. You know you want it as much as I do. I said no. And I mean no. Dirty tease. I'll get you for this. So, what happened to Annes? Tell me. How should I know? I bet she never went to Europe. Don't talk so much. Let's hurry. All right. All right, so she didn't go to Europe. So, what happened to her? I'll tell you later. You two look downstairs and I'll go upstairs.
Do you want me to find out what happened to you? Do you warn me that the same thing might be happening to me? Ellen, Celeste, let's get out of here. There must be another way out of this place. Games. Joe, where are you? Oh my God! Chris, you never stop worrying me, darling. Did you have a, another one of your hallucinations? People don't realize how dangerous these dilapidated old houses can be. Loose floorboards, rickety staircases. Anything could happen to you here. But now I'm here to take care of you. Take care of you. Take care of you. What happened? Nothing happened. I went to the Mac Fallen place. Remember, Ellen? I looked for Becky, and, and there was this girl, murdered, just, just horrible. Hush, you didn't see anything, no one was murdered, you simply had one of your hallucinations. You were along, Ellen, you made me go over there, you, you were afraid that Something might happen to the kids. It's all in your imagination. The kids were never over there. They spent all evening at our house. So, what happened to Ines? Ellen, you know she was murdered at the McFarland place. Nothing happened to her. She's enjoying her summer in Europe. You told me she never went to Europe. I never told you anything like that. Your obsession with Inez's whereabouts simply shows how sick you are. Here, take this. Do they take me back to the hospital? I don't know. Take your pill. It's a mild form of tranquilizer. Try to get some rest. Now let me tell you, not one word about anything you saw or heard last night to anyone. Yeah, okay. The promise. Yes, Dr. Harper. Or you'll be sorry. All of you. All right, kids, come on, let's go. This is Dr. Nielsen. Give me Nurse Flanagan, please. Nurse, this is Dr. Nielsen. Yes, we did find Paul. 
Where did I leave my other purse? Dr. Harp will be taking Paul back. Now make sure that Paul is under heavy sedation. Don't we need him? You know. We'll set up Chris for a routine lobotomy. Then, like we did with Inez, our crazed patient Paul will rush in and take care of the problem. Nurse, you know what I mean. Do I have to spell it out for you? Kill Chris. Don't worry, it worked with Inez, it'll work with Chris. Don't worry about that little hooker. I took care of her when our brilliant Seymour botched up her lobotomy. Okay, see you later. Give me nurse flying again, on the double. Nurse, I almost forgot to tell you. We do need to have surgery set up as usual. It's important that we make it seem like another routine lobotomy. Nothing out of the ordinary. Take care. Chris, I'm really sorry, but I've got to protect Paul. Dr. Nelson said he would turn Paul over to the police. If I didn't cooperate... My poor darling. Why your hallucinations? Your trip into madness? I hate these storms. It's very difficult to function and perform any kind of surgery during an electrical storm. Oh, it'll be over soon. I hope so. Is Paul ready? He is.
No, Becky. Paul did not kill your dad. He, Seymour, and Nurse Flanagan died of fear. At least, that's what the coroner's report stated. Fact is, Paul did not kill anyone. I know. He was under hypnotic suggestion when he killed Inez and the young prostitute. Seeing the black hood was kind of a signal he followed. I talked to Celeste, and she says since he's now under sensible psychiatric care, he might be cured. It's simply impossible for me to accept the reality of what Father and Seymour did. Well, their research started out on a viable base. All what they really wanted was to help the criminally insane. And later, when they had a chance to make it big, things got out of hand, and in the course of their experiments, they killed some people. And then the money ran out. Mom, believe me, I didn't know what Dad was up to and that he wanted your money. If I'd known, I'd have warned you. I know. So, why don't we forget about the past and start living for the present? You're right, Mom. Just look at God's creation around you. Asking us to live fully each day he gives us. <laughs>